Hello and welcome to Duende Media, where we bring you the latest news and ideas with our opinions. I'm your host, Gina Nicholas, and although we usually hold a little bit of a more comedic tone to our podcast, today we're going to get a lot more serious. Over the past couple of days, there has been an issue surrounding the man named Brock Allen Turner that has enraged men and women all over the world. If you don't know who he is, he is better known as the Stanford Rapist a man who raped an unconscious woman and received an unjustly sentence based on who he was as a person. This is his story. Rape culture, a term made by feminists used to describe how society blames sexual assault victims and normalizes male sexual violence. Brock Turner was an athlete at Stanford University and was arrested for attempted rape. On February 1st, 2015, Turner was indicted on five charges, two for rape, two for felony sexual assault, and one for attempted rape. In October 2015, the two rape charges were dropped. In March 2016, he was convicted of two charges of sexual assault and one charge of assault with intent to rape. In June 2016, he was sentenced to six months confinement in a county jail. Although the maximum sentence is usually 14 years in prison, Brock was sentenced to six months in jail and three years probation because the judge said he feared a longer sentence would have a severe impact on Turner, who is a champion swimmer and aspired to compete in the Olympics. A person's identity shouldn't make a sentence more or less severe. A crime is a crime, and that's all that it is. But why is it that rape is the only crime where the victim is the accused? The rape victim was pummeled with questions. What were you worrying? Why were you going to this party? Who were you texting? When did you urinate? Who gave you the drinks? What does this text mean? It's absolutely disgusting how the Stanford victim was seen as the person who had done something wrong. She even came out with a letter to the world and told them. I don't want my body anymore. I was terrified of it. I didn't know what had been in it. If it had been contaminated, who had touched it? I wanted to take off my body like a jacket and leave it at the hospital with everything else. She felt helpless. There was nothing she could do. She came to BuzzFeed and told them, I was pummeled with narrowed points of questions that dissected my personal life, love life, past life, family life, and name questions, accumulating trivial details to try and find an excuse for this guy who had me half naked before even bothering to ask for my name. Despite knowing how disgusting of a crime rape is, the father of Brock Turner, who is Dan Turner, appealed to the judge by saying, Brock's life has been deeply altered forever by the events of January 17th and 18th. He will never be his happy-go-lucky self with that easygoing personality and welcoming smile. Now he barely consumes any food and eats only to exist. Those verdicts have broken and shattered him and our family in so many ways. His life will never be the one that he dreamed about and worked so hard to achieve. That is a steep price to pay for 20 minutes of action out of his 20 plus years of life. The last line itself where Mr. Turner states that his sentence is a steep price to pay for 20 minutes of action out of his 20 plus years of life. How dare he call a rape action as just 20 minutes of action. Brock may be affected for a part of his life, which is completely reasonable since he did something terribly wrong. But the girl who is the victim of this rape will have to live her whole life being mentally scarred by this rape. And the father dares to call it just 20 minutes of action? Even through this, Dan Turner isn't the only one supporting his son against this completely obvious rape case, as his mother also had a few words to say. She dared to write to the judge saying things such as, his life is forever impacted and drastically altered by the ramifications of these guilty verdicts. She even wrote to say that people will wrongly assume he is a child molester, pedophile, and rapist, when in reality, he is. There is a fine line between wanting to protect your child and putting your morals at the peak of your beliefs, and the Turners have definitely crossed that line. Rape culture is becoming more and more evident in our society. Rape culture exists, and cases like these prove it even more so. We can't do anything like raise money to go against rape culture, but we can provide people awareness, which is why I wanted to talk to you about this today. 
I hope with your understanding of this case, you can see how wrongly our world looks at rape and how we must change this in order to prevent situations like these. I want you all to bring awareness to this issue and help bring a stop to it because the world needs to be a safer place. And I want to keep you guys safe as well. This has been Gina Nicholas from Duende Media. See you next time.